。好，谢谢啊，今天啊，呃，叶副组长，还有各位啊，讲座，还有各位伙伴啊，我们啊，北中南东四区要参与的伙伴，今天上午大家讨论的很热烈。然后回到这个场次呢，今天下午呢，我们大概我先啊简单跟大家报告一下啊，今天下午的这个行程。首先是一点半到两点四十，我们要补课啊。昨天有一有一段没有上到的，就 technology 那一段，所以这个部分呢，等一下我们会有请啊呃这个北美环境教育学会的啊 p e p e 哈这个呃 Joy 过来跟我们讲解。同时呢，昨天呢，呃，有一段我们讲 leadership 那一段，就专业领导，那 Judy 很热心的说，他觉得还可以跟我们多讲一些，所以我们在第一个第一场次是一点半到啊两点四十，我们是补昨天没讲完的，接下来两点四十到三点半呢，我们会再回到我们刚才的这个分区讨论啊，四区我们会讨论一些问题，那、啊、等一下我们在讨论之前，由他们会来带领我们讨论，然后最后呢，今天在啊。呃，接下来在我们讨论完之后，也就是啊三、呃、点半到四点这个阶段，啊、呃、我们会各区会指定一位代表报告的，会把我们讨论的结果再跟啊、呃、大家报告。那这个讨论议题等一下下面我们会再继续跟大家谈。最后呢，我们会有综合讨论，所以我们非常高兴呢，我们这个呃叶副署长会来下午会来主持综合讨论。那我们大家可以在这两天的活动里面，所有的部分当中在一啊，在业务上组织之下，我们大家再来做一些综合讨论。Okay, next now, let's welcome, um, let's start for this afternoon session. Uh, let's welcome Pepe and Joy to lead us for evaluation of uh, technology. Okay. Hello. Have a good lunch. Yes. Are you awake? Yes. Don't fix that. <laughs> We're going to speak briefly about environmental education and technology, and um, it's kind of ironic because we're going to talk about technology, and we're having a few technical problems with a YouTube video we're going to show you in a minute, <laughs> which makes a point around the way we use technology. Um, but before we start, I want to ask everybody in this room to get out your smartphone if you have one. Get it out of your pocket. Show them to me. I want to see your your smartphone. Okay. Now, um, Anne is going to pass with a basket, and I want you to put it in that basket for the rest of the day. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> That's not what we're doing. So we can go to the. So okay. So you grab your cell phone. I want you to look at it. Bring it out. I know you put it away. Bring it out. I want you to look at it. Look at it. And I want you to get together with two people beside you. So the people sitting by you. And I want you to. I want you to <laughs> discuss three ways. That this tool, your smartphone, three ways this tool has made it easier for you to teach, to teach EE, and also three ways it has made teaching more difficult for you. Okay, so I want to hear you talking about that for another for a minute, Go. and then I'm going to ask volunteers to share. Okay, go ahead. All right. Let's continue. I can see some of you are doing demonstrations with your technology, but I need your attention again, and I need a volunteer to share one way your piece of technology is helping you teach better, or is becoming a problem when you're teaching. One way, and you'll get this. Chipotle flakes for cooking, all the way from Tucson, Arizona. All right, raise your hand if you want to share. What's the way it's made it easier? All right. Uh, we could take photo immediately, and also. Let's use technology. Go ahead. Uh, we also have recordings, uh, sound or music. Excellent. Thank you. Somebody else, some positive.
我觉得坏处是呃会失焦，就是可能我们在大自然里面，我们拿着 iPhone 或是拿着 iPad 在看的时候，可能我们聚焦的东西是我们看的是那个三 C 产品的屏幕，而不是看到真实世界的样子。Thank you. Very good. Ooh. Careful, those are very hot. Another? Okay. Another? One more. Yes. Uh, it is very to check the photos. If we find the species we discuss, we can check the photos. But the, the witness is the landing web. So you will affect your brain. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, we're gonna we're gonna move forward. We have many other questions for you to participate. But uh, the point here is that technologies are tools, and so that means that a tool can be a good thing or it can be a distraction. And we're gonna talk more about it as we move forward. So I have two questions. In 1951, technology was introduced into formal education settings that they said would revolutionize the way people learn. What was that technology? Television. No? Radio. 1928, they were doing distance education by radio. Television 1948. We have one over here. No? 48 television. No? She's a computer? Calculator? Oh no, those are very old. Okay, I'll give you a hint. What are we watching right now? No. <laughs> what is a PowerPoint? It's an overhead projector on steroids. Overhead projector, 1951, would change how people learned. Get it? No. It is a tool. It didn't change people. 1963, there was a technology unveiled that they said would revolutionize education forever. What was it? Recorder. Recorder? Those were actually um, 20s and 30s. Slide. Skype? Slide. Slide? No. Those are 1920s. <laughs> you guys are really thinking things are newer than they are. Which is true about most technology. We think the technology we know is recent. And most of it's much older. 1963, individualized computer instruction. Did it change how people learn? No. So old technologies that we thought were new and radical didn't change human learning. They're tools for learning. They're not the learning itself. Thanks, Joe. No, we got <laughs> Well, Joe, no. excuse me. We have somebody who had a very cool Close answer. So, <laughs> the minister, you get a, you get a prize. <laughs> All right. So moving along, um, we need technology to click and, and all right. So technology in uh, formal education, as opposed to click, click, sir, click. Technology in informal education. Do you all understand the difference between formal and informal, or also known as non-formal education? Can somebody tell me the difference between formal and informal? One difference. Formal and informal. <laughs> All right. You can use your microphone. Use your microphone. Push the button. Uh, formal, usually we uh, teach in the school. Uh, informal, you can be any other place. Okay, so 
One of, it, one of them happens in the school setting or in, or in a school format. And the other one happens outside. That's a very basic difference. So that's great. So thinking from that parameter, we're going to skip this and go to, go back. Let's not reveal it yet, but sorry. What we're going to do is we're going to play a game. And the rules of the game are as follows. I'm going to show you a picture of technology that is used in education. And that technology that you're going to see, you're going to decide if it's used mostly in formal or in informal education. Okay? If you think it's a tool to, to teach in formal, formal education, you're going to touch the person to your left on the shoulder, like this. If you think it's an informal education or non-formal, outside the classroom, you're going to touch the, the person on your right like that. Okay? You ready? Did you all understand? Okay. Let's left, do it. Left means formal. Right means informal. All right. You ready? Here we go. Number one. Pencils. Okay, do it. I want to see it. Both? Okay. And are pencils a technology? Yes. A pencil is a piece of technology. It's a tool. Very okay. old. Very old technology. Next. A tablet or an iPad. And you can lower your hands and do it again. Okay. Both. Okay. Next. Books. All right. Seems like both for all of them. Facebook. Okay, I see a little bit of hesitation. Some people going left, some people going right. Both. PowerPoint projector. Informal. Formal. Both. Okay, next. YouTube. Ah, I see some hesitation. Yeah, I heard of formal. All right, let's do before you click on the next one. Go back. Oh darn it. Um, do it quickly. Don't think about it. I want to see your hand moving in the direction as soon as you see the picture. And stay where you decide. Don't move back. Okay. I don't want hesitation. Do whatever your gut tells you. Next, magnifying glass. More formal. Informal, I see a lot of informal here. Google! Google! Both? Okay, next. It's hard to see that one, but that is an easel with paper where you write a poster. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's hard because of the light. All right, next one. Okay. So, I heard a lot of both. That's why I'm saying both here. Why? Because, just like what, what um, Joe was asking before, the technology that people thought was going to revolutionize the way we learn was not so much. It's the same thing here. Those are tools that help you, that can help you in any setting. Or it can also be a distraction in any setting. Like, if you are teaching something and you're talking or you're doing a hiking nature and you have a student reading a book, that's a distraction. Or you have a student in a classroom playing with their phone. That's a distraction. So again, those are tools and it's about how you use them. So get in groups, uh, same groups you were in before. And what we want you to talk about right now is what are examples of good use of technology in environmental education in Taiwan in different settings? And what is, uh, and then the second one is what is or should be the role of technology in environmental education regional centers in Taiwan? Talk amongst yourselves. Go for it. Working groups. Oh. All right. What are some um, examples of good use of technology in BE in Taiwan? Anyone? Do we have prices? Sure. We do have prices. Motion. Use the cell Anyone? Example? Yes. Uh, I work in a botanical garden in Taipei Botanical and the food side. We uh, devised the QR code uh, display 
on our uh, pen uh, display. So you can uh, use the uh, cell phone. You can read any information from the QR code number. Yes, QR codes in informal settings are becoming quite valuable. They're also being used in some theater productions now, which are fabulous. Uh, another one, another good example. Uh, we will use the line, maybe you, you don't know that, to connect our partner. partner. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Thank you. And you get it. Here it comes. Uh, one more? Oh, yeah. Okay. 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 So there are really some good examples and opportunities for appropriate technological use. Easy to cross the line. Very easy to cross the line. Um, what should be the role of tech? Let's come to this one later. Let's come to this one later. Let's play the game again. Kidding. All right. So we're going to use technology to build capacity too. We don't use it only as environmental indicators. We don't use it only um, in the classroom or when we're teaching kids or students outside, but we also use it ourselves. And I think it's something that many of you this morning, when, when you were talking about your plans for your center, you were already talking about using uh, MOOCs and online courses and things like that. And if you remember from the EE Capacity um, um, presentation and from uh, the NAAWE presentation yesterday, there's many initiatives that happen um, in the U.S. at the national level that deal with uh, or use technology as, as a tool to network and as a tool to train and as a tool for collaboration. Now, oh, go ahead. And there is a caution because there are a lot of platforms that say they do all of them and they do all of them but not well. Different platforms are better for, different technologies are better for different things. And any technology that tries to do many things often fails. Yeah, thanks. And that's a good um, leeway for what we have next. And so we have a video. Uh, if you can play the YouTube video. We have a video that I, I, some of you might have seen before in YouTube. Oh, please. And it's a, a conference call in real life. How many of you do conference calls for work? Conference calls. Raise your hand if you do conference calls. That is a call when you have a meeting over the phone. Do you do that? Yeah? Sometimes. I'm trying to see if we're translating, yeah? Okay. Something sometimes. All right, so let's go. Trip Crosby. Has joined the meeting. Question actually should do. Oh, go ahead. 
Oh, I think well, what we should do. It actually depends on how you look at it because the really come. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. Give it tails. Let me just say that. Great graphic, John. Uh, Tyler? Well, my main concern, Judge Junior, is that. can be our best friend, but also it can be a lot, of, a lot of problems. Now, why do people keep doing, uh, why do we keep doing conference calls if it's such a trouble? Um, it brings a benefit. We don't have to go to meet in one room um, when we can do it over the phone. And that's why we also use things like, if you can go to the next one, um, we use WebEx um, as a tool or any other webinar tool. And that's why we collaborate and use Google Docs and we're working together and conference calls and, and Facebook, etc. But those are tools. Tool, tools are, are just tools. And they don't define how we learn and they don't define the success of our program. And so um, I want to tell you really quickly an example of that actually happened in our EE capacity. It's a very interesting learning experience of how people learn and how people prioritize the amount of time they dedicate to learning online. Next. You might recognize this. Um, I, I call this the, the well, the, the subway or the MRT or the, the, the public transportation model. Five minutes, okay. Um, and what you have here is basically you do activities online that are open to the public. And so you do a webinar or you do any kind of other online learning experience. And people basically join like you would go to the MRT at any station. And you can get off at any other station, right? You decide how long is your trip, how long you participate. You need to think if that is the approach you want to follow and be proactive about that. Because otherwise you can use, the next slide, the train station approach. And that is, you buy a ticket to go from one city to another, and you are committing after buying the ticket to be on that train for the entirety of the trip. Sometimes things happen and you have to get off the train. But most of the time people are gonna stay because they're investing that time. That's more what, what happens, say, with an online course. Um, something that uh, we've learned in e-capacity, we were doing uh, learning communities online, and what we learned was that for people to commit to be on a, or buying a, a train ticket and moving from one station to another, meaning to be there for the entire experience and learn as a community, they need to have some goal in common. When you're moving from one train station to another, going, say, from here to Valiente, you, you all, everybody on that train is trying to get to that city. 
And so when you have a project and you learn together, for example, if you're writing together a paper, or if you are building a website, or whatever it is that you want to, want to work together on, you're going to see that people stay motivated. And so that is what we've been learning uh, through the eCapacity project, among many other things. And we don't have enough time to go more in depth around this. But what it means is that you have to think consciously about how you want to use technology so that the tool is not defining the program, but that your program and your goals, your programmatic goals, are going to define the tools that you're going to use. So some of the things that we do know technology works well for is, is um, the bridging between the inside and the outside, the, the bridging with comfort. So using technology not as the replacement of nature, but to get children and adults outdoors in nature. We see this a lot in informal settings. We also see it in using um, technology to document experiences. That is becoming a, a, it's a natural use of a lot of the handheld devices. People do it, so we use it in our teaching because it is a natural connection for them. And that is also then used in a lot of the um, apps for um, identification of species. We're seeing a tremendous growth in the use of technology in public participation. Can't talk. Public participation in scientific research. People using the technologies um, to document, to gather, to count, and then submitting it um, using the same technology. We're also seeing it in informals, very much in, inter in connected interactives. How is it that I engage in this experience and connect it to the next experience? And we're using the technology to help make those psychological and cognitive connections for the visitor. And then we're doing a lot of technological tracking, how people move through experiences, whether it's a web platform or whether it's a connected interactives. We begin to look, and we're seeing, doing this a lot in formal ed as well, we're looking at how people go through a process. What logical patterns do they follow? What illogical patterns do they follow? And why? And finally, um, we're seeing them used for replacement experiences. I cannot be somewhere. So I have an adapted experience for that place. But not in place of. And the, the replacement activity is an odd name because it's not replacing the real experience. It's supplementing your own experience with an insight that something is different elsewhere. So the idea of replacing an experience because I can't be there. So we no, have. I think we don't have time. We don't have time for questions. Okay. Can we show the questions so that they can? Uh, I want you to look at that question and think about this because this is going to be something that hopefully is going to help you in your discussion after this. Uh, what is the right balance? for technology and experience in environmental education in the EE centers, in your centers. So just have that in mind um, as we're moving forward. Good, thanks. And some concluding thoughts, and we'll alternate these. First, technology is a tool. It is only a tool. A tool is only really good for the purpose for which it was des designed. A tool is only as good as the skill of its user. Matters a lot. And today's high tech is tomorrow's everyday use technology. And keep the end in mind, nature human interaction is what we're really about. And it's in, about, and for the environment. Do not let the technology overshadow the nature. Thank you. Thanks.